Hello and welcome to Pots and Trials and thank you to our sponsors Mr Fothergill Seeds and Cobra Garden. Today I'm going to be sowing perennials to flower next year and checking the onions in the vegetable plot. Well here we are middle of August and I'm already thinking about the garden next year and that's the great thing about garden you plan ahead and think about what you want to grow. And one group of plants that's really good in the garden are the herbaceous perennials that come back year after year and just provide us with loads and loads of flowers. Now if you've got established clumps already in the garden then you can lift them in autumn or spring and divide them and spread them around but if you haven't got them you've either got to buy the plants or a really easy way to do it and cost effective way is to grow Grow your own from seed and this is a really good time to do it and there's all sorts of different seeds around that you can get things like the lovely agistache there and the echinacea that the bees and butterflies love we've got the lovely delphiniums with their lovely towering spires of flowers aquilegia spring flowering one really interesting types there and lupins in all different types so good range and if you sow them now you'll get lovely strong plants that are either ready to plant out in the autumn sort of October November time or you can keep them in small pots and then plant them out in the spring and they'll get away very quickly and you'll get wonderful flowers so all you need to do to sow them is you need some compost there so get a nice well-drained fine compost for seed sowing and some pots and away you go so I've already filled a few pots ready but basically all we do to fill a pot is um, you don't want them too big I'm going to sow the lupins in this and I think the lupins have got 25 seeds in and they're, they're quite big seedlings so this is more than big enough so don't get a big seed tray and the easy way to do it is just to overfill it like that and then just strike off the surplus so that you've got a nice level some people just give it a few sharp taps but I like to just firm it down and I've got some little wooden cutouts that I use in various sizes and I just tamp it down and you want it to be maybe a centimetre down what we're looking for is a nice level surface to sew on but we want it to be so it's still a little bit springy there so not compacted if you haven't got one of these don't worry about it it's not the end of the world just use the base of a pot and just go over it like that to firm it down but it does make it better and easier for sewing so just gonna brush the compost away because if you drop seeds on there it'll get mixed in and we don't want the lupins growing amongst our aquilegias um, and then I'm going to just rip this one open and get these seeds out now lupins are fairly large seeds so these are a nice easy one to sow so it's just a case of getting them out of the packet and we can see they're fairly large seeds on these lupins this is a lovely one called festival mix it's not a really tall growing one it only goes to about two feet and it's ideal for smaller gardens or even in pots so all I'm going to do is to space these seeds out nice and evenly over the surface of the compost and there's 25 or 30 seeds as I said in this packet so we can put all of those into this pot and the idea is to try and space them as evenly as possible and that goes for all seeds whether they're large or small we want to try and give them all roughly the same amount of growing area so that we get an even batch of seedlings uh, and then they'll all grow the same so that's them on the surface and then we need to cover them over and two ways we can do this one is you can use a little sieve like this and this is ideal and all we need to do is to just pop a bit of compost in it and then just sieve the compost over until the seeds disappear from sight and then we know we've got enough compost on there if you haven't got a sieve again don't worry I'll show you what we do on this pot here this has got no seeds in it but if this had got seeds in all we would do is to get a little bit of compost and just sprinkle it again nice and evenly over the surface like that uh, and then give it a tap lightly firm it down and away we go so you don't need to have the presser boards or the sieve so once we've sewn I'm going to put a label in do your label straight away um, I'm using plastic labels but I always write in pencil because that way you can wash them off and reuse them many many times again so a label in there and then give it a drink straight away before the compost dries so just hold it away from the bench just give that a drink and then 
for those to germinate we don't need any heat at this time of the year if you've got a cold frame or a cold greenhouse that is ideal for them but if you haven't got them just put them outside somewhere sheltered against the wall put them in a tray so they're all together um, and they will germinate quite happily out there and then when they've germinated and they're ready to do something with we can prick them out and grow them on so I've got all different types here so I'm going to sow these and hopefully we'll get a lovely display of perennials next season. Well, getting to the time when onions are almost ready to harvest, uh, so I thought I'd just check on them. Um, some people, I think, harvest their onions too early. Ideally, if you want your onions to store right the way through the winter and into spring, they've got to ripen naturally. So I often see where people have got really tall onion growth, really green and still growing, and they lift them. But because the bulb hasn't ripened, they don't store as well. So I let mine do it naturally, and it's usually late August, early September by the time that I actually lift them out the ground. And We've had a bit of windy weather and some storms over the last week, so the tops have gone down. So I go along and put them all in one direction and try not to cover the bulb behind because we, what we want is when we do get some sunshine, we want the sun to shine on these bulbs and to ripen that outer layer of skin so it goes a lovely golden brown. And that's the idea, we want them to ripen as much as we can. Now when they are ready to lift, and having looked at these, I'm actually going to give these probably another week before I lift them. I bought my tray out just in case I was lifting them but I don't think I'm going to need it today. But what I can do now is stop them growing because the tops have bent over and they're not going to grow anymore anyway. So a good way to do that, a little tip, is just to get a little hand fork and just to these have still got a good root system and they're attached and if you just put your fork under and just lift it slightly and if you listen you can just hear those roots snapping. Just if I put it in and and you can also hear lawn mowers starting up because today is the day everybody mows their lawns but just snap the roots a little bit and it's just brought it away what will happen is now they will stop taking in moisture and they will dry off and I can leave them now what we're hoping for is some lovely warm weather to dry them if where you are the weather is wet and you think they're never going to dry outside like this then what you can do is go a step further and you can take them up just shake off any soil and then put them on a tray like this one and just knock the soil off and these are made lovely lovely bulbs this variety is one called centurion these were planted from onion sets back in april and as you can see they've made some nice bulbs so it's just then a case of we can put them down and out like that to dry and put them under cover in a shed or a greenhouse or a carport somewhere where it's dry so the rain can't get on them and then over the next two or three weeks they'll really dry back and only when all these tops have gone brown and wizened can we then start to store them for winter so this is very much the drying off and the ripening process to ensure they store over the winter so having said I'm not going to lift them I think I might do because this ground is pretty wet so I think that's my afternoon job taken care of. Well, thank you for watching Pots and Trials and thank you for your likes and shares. Next time I'm going to be cutting the hedges and I'm going to be trimming back some mint. So we'll see you then. Bye.